The reason for placing the Lord Jesus first is because of words which follow and which describe the work of the Father. However, in doing this, there is the implicit hint, as is seen so many times elsewhere, of the equality of the persons within the Godhead. Uh, Burke and I were talking about a movie uh, a while ago, and uh, it, it doesn't matter what movie it was. It was, uh, you know, obviously not based on the Bible itself, but it was a uh, Christian movie about Jesus encountering somebody. And uh, one of the things that this person, uh, once she came to believe it was Jesus, uh, was uh, he affirmed to her, I am God. Okay? And that's one thing that we need to understand is that Jesus is God. And it's a real problem. As I said in the prayer when we opened today, there are people out there that do not teach that or they teach it wrong. If you uh, go to many, many countries, there's a big evangelism by the Mormons. And they are in there bringing darkness. They're not bringing any light at all. Their darkness is that Jesus was a man who became a God. And that you too someday will become a God. And you will rule your own little universe and you'll be just like Jesus was somewhere else. Um, it's very sad theology. It's uh, something that has infected millions and millions and millions of people. And it didn't have to be this way. But uh, the Lord allows us to make our own choices. He allows, you know, people always ask, why is there evil in the world? Well, why is there Islam? Why are there Mormons? It's because God allows us to make our own choices. We can accept him as he is. We can accept his word as it's written, or we can reject it. And uh, so when we're reading things like this, uh, right here, it very clearly shows that he is making a distinction, Jesus and God the Father. And yet, if you uh, study what the word is saying, Jesus is God, and obviously the Father is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. But he is making a distinction between them, showing us not only that there is one God, but there are there is a substance within the Godhead, which is more than just simply a monad. We call it the Trinity. It's not a triad, which would be three gods sitting on three, you know, pedestals and all uh, doing their own thing. There is one God who has revealed himself in three persons, okay? And we say persons because that comes from Augustine, and uh, his reason for that was, I understand it's not the best terminology, but for a lack of, one. yeah, for, well, for a lack of being silent, he said, I've got to use something. And so he uh, used the term persons. Um, and there's no contradiction in having three in one. That, you know, I've brought this example up many, many times where you have time is one thing, and yet time is three things. It's uh, future, present, and past. They've always existed. They are always going to exist as long as time exists. And yet they're three separate things, but they are one thing. Okay, that's a very simple example. We could go through it a lot more detail on that, but um, Paul is not making a distinction between Jesus and God here. He's actually enforcing the thought of the Trinity. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> let's see here. <coughs> they are, um, uh, the word and between the two shows that they are separate and distinct. A Godhead is thus identified and that they are equal within this Godhead. As this is a prayer made directly to Jesus, as well as to the Father, it recognizes the equality of the two. Uh, once again, we talked about this, uh, I don't know, maybe a month or two ago, is can we pray to Jesus? And the Bible has absolutely no problem with that at all. The very last prayer that Stephan ever made on this planet before he exited to heaven was to Jesus. Okay, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit, etc. So um, it's no problem if you want to pray to Jesus, but Jesus is the mediator. The human Jesus is the mediator between us and God. Okay, he is the way of us speaking to God. Without Jesus, we could not do so because sin separates us from God so that he does not hear our prayers. Okay, I understand that's from the Old Testament Isaiah, but it's a truth that still exists to this day. The only prayer that God wants to hear from an unbeliever is a prayer of confession of Jesus. Other than that, he will not hear prayer.